Hey, this is Laura Whitmore with the She Rocks podcast, and I'm here with Mindy A. Bear. We're here at the NAM show. It's a little noisy in the background, but we're having fun. We're going to talk to Mindy about what she's got coming up this year and all the amazing things that she's been involved in. So, hey, Mindy. So good to see you. It's great to see you. And and this has got to be the coolest place to do a podcast. <laughs> I wish you all were here so you could see us. We're by a semi-truck in a huge hall with everyone doing their best to make more noise than everyone else. It's This is... This is pretty cool. It's all that. It's all that lights flashing and uh, the beat pumping. <laughs> this is the place to be. So uh, you know, yeah, let's we're, use we're this in for the middle inspiration. Of it all. Why not? Yeah. Yes, let's use it for inspiration. I like that. <laughs> so, Mindy, you and the Bone Shakers came out with an album last year that has done really amazingly well. So, can you share a little bit about the album and what's been happening with it? I know you've been like touring like crazy and. We've had a we've had a busy few years. So this is our fourth record as a band, and uh, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing ride. It's fun to make music with your friends, and you know we veered off a couple records ago to go more blues rock and to be in that world and and kind of just expand and and have fun, have that abandon of blues and rock. So this record just kind of took it further. We did a couple covers. We did a, co- a cover of the Rascals song from, you know, 1964. I mean, come on. Like, what uh, song was that? You Better Run. Oh, awesome. You Better Run. Uh, we did a Tina Turner and Ike Turner, you know, Ike and Tina, baby. Uh, we did a song by them that's uh, the last time I saw that was like in the 70s. And I just I'm such a Tina Turner fan. I'm a hopeless, you know, hopeless fan for Tina Turner. So we did that. It's called Baby Get It On. It's a deep wow. song. Baby Get It On. Nice. <laughs> uh, but we did a bunch of originals as well. And uh, we were lucky enough. It debuted at number three on the Billboard Blues charts and has been at radio quite a lot, getting played on blues radio. So we've just been out there in the trenches, you know, having fun, playing it and playing a bunch of blues festivals. We did the uh, legendary blues cruise with a bunch of other artists. And that was just a blast. So I want to yeah, go on the blues go. cruise with you, Mindy. You know what? We go. should all go. Come on. <laughs> just stop in Mexico, drink some tequila, walk on the beach, and then go, you know, play and listen to everyone else. Great play. Oh, it's so fun. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I love it. So, um, you know, I feel like the blues, you know, it's, a, it's an older art form, but I feel like lately it has become... I don't know, more of a thing. Like, I know a lot of people who are blues artists. I like to go see blues music myself. Like, do you feel that? Do you feel like the blues is, like, getting getting its due? I I do feel like blues is kind of coming of age in in a certain odd way. I mean, it's the basis for everything. You look back to jazz, you know, there would not be jazz if there weren't blues. You know, jazz is just blues gone to college. (laughs) I hope we're not like, I hope we're not accepting the blues more because we're more down and out. (laughs) Hey, you know what? Uh, I've got friends in blues that are like, no, we are preaching joy. You know, we're not just saying we're down and, you know, and, and hopeless. Like we're, we're preaching joy. We're singing to bring hope, you know, and that's what people did long ago so i i think it's amazing and i grew up with a lot of soul and blues and rock and roll growing up so for me i i kind of you know went left and found jazz and pop and and just was enamored with that but to come back around to kind of what i grew up with and and just come back to that and and be that and and put myself in that world it's really been It's been fun and it's been very natural. And I love music that's, you know, maybe not technically driven. It's emotion driven, whether it's joy or whether it's pain. It's all heart and soul. You can play one note and it's if it's right, it's right. You know, so it's it's about getting that emotion and playing with that abandon that, that you can really just emote and give and feel and and I love that about this music and I think that's why it has you know kind of gained popularity 
recently. It just grabs you and sucks you right in. You know, it's yeah, it's the it's the universal language. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need music with feeling. We need music with emotion of power. You know, it's yeah. good. Well, I, I'm with you there. I'm. I think as a musician too, like the the idea that you can take a, it's sort of a simple form, a song form, the blues. But I mean, every way that you can make a variation on that, it there it's infinite, you know. And it, it's it's so cool to see everybody's take on what they do and how they manipulate it. I, I think push it's the a boundaries lot, of it. it yeah. It's a lot like uh, like jazz in many ways. That you know, jazz you've got modern jazz and traditional jazz and contemporary jazz and acid jazz, uh, you know, all these different kind of, you know, ways that people play and they all judge each other for it. It's like the traditional jazz guys are like, Oh, don't listen to that pop jazz. That's, you know, that's bad for your soul, you know, but it's the same with blues. It's really awesome when you can find a, a genre of music that people take it and make it their own and, and give their creativity to it. So I always applaud those people who kind of take it their own way. You got people in blues like Keb Mo that's more singer songwriter ish and really personal. Then, you know, you got buddy guy who just goes out and he's a freaking lion out there at 80 something years old and just, rah, you know, growling at you from the stage. And you got Bonnie Raitt who's, you know, beautiful and heartfelt and, you know, it, it, it's really, it's, it's very cool to be able to kind of express yourself. And we've never been a, a band or me as an artist, never been that type to be traditional in any way. I grew up with a grandmother who was an opera singer and a dad who was in a soul band and then had hair down to his butt for uh, countless years. You know, it's like I was listening to rock and roll and James Brown and opera. <laughs> How does that make sense? But I, I think that you make music that moves you and, and you find your way and whether it's blues or jazz or rock and roll, make yeah. it and make it yours. Good. So, I mean, you are a saxophone player, and I'm guessing that when you were younger, there were not a lot of female saxophone players in your world. How was that for you, and, and how did you choose that instrument? You know, I'm going to say I thank everyone around me when I was a kid, my parents, my teachers, for just saying, you can do anything you want to do, and you'll just be successful at it. Just work hard, and, uh, you know being a kid you believe what you're told and so I chose saxophone because my school band teacher just put out a bunch of instruments one day and she goes look and see what what moves you pick it up bring it to your seat we'll learn how to play it and boy I looked at the saxophone and my father played saxophone and I grew up on the road with his band just watching him every night as a you know super little kid and he was the guy that was knocking his knees together and shimmying and shaking and walking the bar. And he was, you know, just he was crazy. And he looked like he was having so much fun. And so I just figured, all right, saxophone looks like fun. I want to have as much fun as dad had playing the saxophone. And sure enough, it's raucous and it's awesome. And you can whisper through it and you can, you know, you can just make all these crazy sounds with it. And yeah, it never let me down. Being a woman, uh, to answer your your first question, I never really thought about it. It never occurred to me until uh, until I was trying to get in college, and I went to a college right by my house and and auditioned. And literally, I went in the saxophone professor's room. I'm 17 years old, just wide eyed, just woohoo! I'm gonna go be a music major. And he said, as I walked through the door, he was like. Yeah, girls don't really make it at this school. What? <laughs> and and we're living in 1825. <laughs> right, right. That's what I feel like. It had never occurred to me that that was even something to be said, you know? So that was the first inkling I had that maybe I was a little different. <laughs> wow. But what was cool was... Did I, that get you down, though? Did that... It did. I, I really... Um, I was so shocked and I was so bummed because I so wanted to go to school there. Some of my friends had gone and, and I was just like, oh, my God. But I really looked at it and, I, you know, I, I look back now and you can take all these things that beat you down and you can just get me down. 
or, or you can take them and be like, oh, no. Oh, no, that's not that's not the way that's going to go. I found Berkeley College of Music and uh, Berkeley at the time. Not a terrible second choice. <laughs> right. It was just far from where I lived. You know, it was that was whoa, that was a big deal. Um, but it was 3% women at that time. Wow. You know, Yikes. Yikes. and they let me in and they helped me and they were amazing to me. You know, they just, they told me, be yourself, be who you are, be a woman, say things that you want to say. And what a beautiful thing to tell, uh, you know, a, a young girl that and influence, you know, they definitely influenced who I was as an artist and helped move me forward as me, not as me trying to be one of the guys. And, Cause I, I struggled with that at first, um, you know, wanting to wear like men's suits and be like the boys. They're like, you don't have to be that. Just be you. You're cool. So, you know, it takes a little while to find your own sense of self and your own self-worth and, and realizing that what makes you different is what makes you cool. <laughs> Well, you definitely made it work for you because, I, I mean, I, I remember you were on American Idol, right? And I remember, I don't know if it was one of the judges or somebody was talking about, you know, the, the chick saxophone player stole the show. Like, you know, it's, oh, yeah, well, there you go. I mean, it's, it, you've made it work for you in a way that, yeah, you're, I mean, you're an amazing player, but hey, you know, you got to take what life gives you and make it make it into your power, right? Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, it was it was certain things too when I first went on American Idol, uh, they the producer looked at me because I was supposed to play old-time rock and roll. That was the first song I ever uh, played with an artist on American Idol, and the producer came up and she goes, "I see you in men's underwear on your knees." sliding across playing the sax solo in the Ray-Ban glasses and the socks. And I just looked at her and started laughing because I thought, of course she's joking. Now she wasn't joking. That's and, insane. <laughs> and I went, that's not going to happen. And I'm so sorry. You've got the wrong person. Um, that's not me. I'm a player. And that's, yeah, that's just not the person you wow. hired. So she kind of, she goes, well, I'm going to have wardrobe go out and get it and at least try it on for me. And we're going to see this through. And I was like, I still won't do it. You can go, you can, I'll try it on for you. No, I'm not, you know. And, uh, so that night happened, I wore my own clothes and that's when Steven Tyler was like, yeah. Hey, forget you. Who's your sax player? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was just like, thank God. I didn't wear the risky business outfit. That's ridiculous. And slide in on my knees. You know, it's like, as women, we can get caught up in, oh, you need us to do this? Oh, this is, okay, well, I'll make you happy. But at a certain point, like, no, I'm me, and I wore what I wear, yeah. you know? And well, so, and you, I mean, I was going to ask you about fashion, because you always have the coolest everything. Clothes, jewelry, Thank hair. You. <laughs> like, I, I just want I just want to, like, rub a little of that to rub off on me. <laughs> You're so sweet. Thank you. I, I always feel like, okay, I'm going to say this. I Like, as a 50-something-year-old woman, it is hard to look cool. And not look like you're trying too hard, right? Yeah, of course. Like, of course. Do you struggle with that at all? I mean, maybe it's different because you're a performer, so you're allowed to like wear any crazy thing you want. You know what? It's a great question because, you know, there's so much fashion out there that's just, it's it's hoe-based fashion, you know? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've lived in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I've lived a long time in Hollywood, and we have the Hollywood people who live there and we'll go out to clubs and stuff but then we'll see the girls coming in from like orange county or from you know some other place trying to be hollywood and trying to be what they think they should be and it's the short skirts and the you know the nails that are out to there and the, the heels that they can't walk in because they don't walk in them the rest of the week and it's interesting. I've, I've kind of learned to be comfortable in my own skin and, and not try so hard to be maybe what fashion thinks you should be. 
So, you know, you'll find me in the, the crazy used clothing stores and, and just off the beaten path because right now I look at everything in stores and I'm like, this does not fit me. And I, I don't mean size wise. I just yeah. mean, I don't like it. I don't relate to it. Yeah. And I, I don't want to follow fashion. I just want to do what matches me, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and yeah, I don't, I don't want to be what any of that is. But, it's definitely, you know. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel, I personally feel the challenge. Um, and, you know, I, I'm the kind of person I'd rather just have like a few cool things and I don't need 8,000 things. My husband makes fun of me because, um, I have a drawer full of 10, uh, black tank tops. I'm wearing one today. And, uh, <laughs> hey, you gotta have the black tank, tank t- t- black t shirt, black tank top. We're good. <laughs> I wear one every day. Yeah. I don't have to think about it. You know, sometimes I wear them on stage, but not that often. I'll, I'll wear cooler stuff on stage, but it's like my uniform and I can put different stuff with it, different rings and, and, you know, bracelets and whatever. Um, but it's like, okay, and this fits. I'm comfortable in it. Yeah. I like it. I like it. It's easy. And you know, I'm sure the fashion person would be like, what? That's yeah. not okay. But you got to find what that's your thing. What makes you comfy. All right. I'm going to come back to music now. Cause I know that you're working on some new stuff. So can you give us a little clue of what's coming up? A- absolutely. Um, I just got back from five days in Nashville and Ooh. I just kind of immersed Nice. In songwriting. Yeah, it's such a cool place to go to just get, um, you know, get inspired. I went out and saw a couple bands and uh, wrote with a few different people that I didn't know, wrote with a few people who have been tried and true for me. And I always just try to expand and and see where it can take me that that maybe I wouldn't go if I was just sitting in a room by myself. I think that's a cool thing to just try and grow as you uh, get older and, and make more music. It's so, getting louder in here. I, hope. I know, right? <laughs> I hope they can still hear us talk. You feel here. like you're at a concert? Because <laughs> you are. <laughs> this is the real deal. We aren't making this up. Sorry. Continue on. That's fine. Yeah. So um, I'm writing songs for a new record, and this new record, I'm going back to being a solo artist. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. So I'm, I'm really taking the best of, of what I started off as as an artist which was a lot of instrumentals a lot of really melodic kind of soaring melodies you know um and mix that with kind of the the swagger and the abandon that have been you know the the last four records it's like I I kind of got off the road um from doing Aerosmith and and out with Max Weinberg and you know just American Idol and all that stuff and I, I was just like I have to bring this to my own music I have to bring this abandon and that just giving everything so I think there's this really cool place that I've found that is all of me you know that I can bring the blues and the rock and roll and the and the kind of singer songwriter aspect to me and the saxophone and and bring it all and and uh, come out with a really cool solo project so I'm I'm psyched. I've got most of the songs and we're just booking, you know, booking uh, dates to do it now. So it'll probably be out uh, at some point in the summer. Yeah. Wow. That's that's awesome. I mean, I will say like I I, I'm super excited about that and I'm excited to see it live because like when you do a live show, you are all in. (laughs) If any of you go see Mindy Hebert play live, it is the most exciting fantastic stage energy that, you, that you've Thank ever you. seen. <laughs> we give it all. You do. Like, I, I didn't do. grow I'm up, like, you know. I'm, and it, it doesn't feel forced in any way. It just feels like you're up there having a good time and you want to bring everybody along with you. We are. We are. I mean, I grew up seeing bands like, you know, Bruce Springsteen just... I mean, by the end of his four-hour shows, you know, the guy is on a different belt loop, yeah. you know? It's like <laughs> he, he's lost five pounds because yeah. he's given it all to us all night. And I, I remember hearing him say years ago, people pay a ticket price to come in to see our shows. I want it to be priceless. I don't want them to feel like they got their money's worth. I want it to feel priceless. And I loved that. And I, I totally believe that when someone walks away from our show, I want them to feel like we, we gave a pound of flesh for them. Yeah. Well, it is 
I will. I would say that your shows are memorable, not just because you're my friend, but <laughs> you're kind of biased. I am. I am biased, but I see a lot of live music. Yeah, and I know the difference. And kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. No, we do have fun. It's a party. I'm tired at the end, but it's awesome. It's the best feeling in the world to stand up there on stage with your friends and yeah. make music that means something to you that you know, you hope translates and, and you can just share it with everyone and kind of escape from the, the reality of, of the real world, you know, <laughs> and just kind of be in the music for yeah, a couple I, hours. I, I always, when I see a good show, I mean, as a musician myself, I always feel inspired to, you know, work on my music, go out and play. Like, you know, you want to walk away feeling like, yeah, I love that energy. That's good. Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's the, the mark of a good show. It's like to walk away and go, yeah, okay, I got to go play. <laughs> I, I got to go. I got to go do my thing. You know? I want to know who you go to see that makes you feel that way. You know what? I go to see kind of a weird array of, of artists, you know, um, one of my favorite bands and the first band I paid to go see actually was Cheap Trick. Oh yeah. Um, and I've been a huge Cheap Trick fan. When I played with Aerosmith, Cheap Trick was the opening act every night. And I just OD'd <laughs> on Cheap Trick. Every night I'd be sitting there by Rick Nielsen's, you know, guitar world. And I'd just sit and watch like a kid. And I was just so enamored and in am with the, the whole band. Um, so I love Cheap Trick. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, I, I live walking distance from the Hollywood Bowl. And I have four, four of my friends that have been friends for probably 20 years or more in Barry Manilow's band. Oh, man. Wow. Walked down to the Hollywood Bowl. Went to go see Barry Manilow. He's 76 years I was old. Say, he's still out there doing it. He he was amazing. amazing. <laughs> Look, you don't want to you don't want to admit it. I knew every word to I would every admit song. It. I could sing along. It was transcendent. The whole place. Wait, which you know. is your favorite Barry Manilow song? Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm with you, yeah, though. I, I, I probably know. know all the words to every Barry Manilow song. Yeah. Now you know how old I really am. But it was the same with Billy Joel. I went to a oh, Billy yeah. Joel show, oh, and, you know, and, and the Stones. I saw the Stones at the Hollywood Bowl quite a few years ago now, and it was just... That's fantastic. I felt like the coolest person on the planet. Yeah. You know? That's and all good stuff. It's like, you know, so I, I go to see different people. Gary Clark Jr. I oh, love yeah. Foo Fighters. I'm a huge fan of... Um, but then I'll go to, you know, little crappy clubs and yeah. go see Esperanza Spalding or, you know, uh, I saw her on that last tour she did with the spells. It was a cool, it was super cool. Yeah. She's super cool and, and different. She's cool. She can sing her ass off. Holy moly. <laughs> she can, she can do whatever she wants. Yeah. The, the, she's the cool. Tonal melody she was singing. I was like, how can anybody even remember how to do that? I have no idea. Yeah. I went to see her with Joe Lovano and I'm a dorky sax player and I'll, I'll dork out with the best of them on stuff. But I, you know, I'm not the musician that's the free jazz outside jazz. You know, I took lessons from George Garzone and I loved every second of it, but uh, I look at him now and I, I go, you know, I didn't become the sax player you wanted me to be, but I, I went with my heart and this is who I am. And, you know, I, I watch people like Joe Lovano and, and Esperanza and George Garzone and just think, wow, how does their mind work like yeah. that? And I, <laughs> I'm so appreciative because mine doesn't. And, uh, you know, I'm the the simpleton over here just yeah. thinking in three chords and <laughs> and the truth you know but this it's so cool it's to watch good. other people i know and it i think sometimes it does inform something that you're doing like i might go see someone play and I, it may not be that it changes like how i write melodically but it might change one little thing yeah yeah. One little thing, like maybe I don't go to, you know, the tonic right there. Maybe I, maybe I do some little twist because I saw that other person, you yeah. know, take that step. So inspiration's a, a cool thing. I do a festival, um, in Florida every year. And so the, the beauty of doing your own festival is you can hire who you love, yeah. right? I mean, that's yeah. the power. So I hired, um, I had a few girl groups because, you know, yeah. I got to hire 
us. We've got to <laughs> celebrate women. Um, but I'm such a fan of Larkin Poe. And oh uh, you and I have talked about them. I know, them. I love them. And I just think... I'm going to get them for this podcast. They're, they're totally... They're, they're younger, but they derive so much of their material through these old blues songs that you know everyone else has forgotten about or or just pushed aside and they're finding all this inspiration in them and their writing is really good their too. writing's great yeah. they're great musicians and they, and they've got great heart and i love when i see that in younger artists that it's just like okay you're carrying the torch you're doing it differently and you're amazing and, and it's cool and inspiring to watch them. So it, it's fun to hire people you think are cool. <laughs> yes, of course. And, you know, speaking of women's empowerment, I know you've got some really cool, like sort of female focused content in your next album. Ah! Correct. Yes. <laughs> I've played you a few songs. You yes. Have, yeah. I know. You have insider so, knowledge. I have insider knowledge in a good way. <laughs> And I'm so, so stoked about that. And, um, you know, this is, by the time you guys hear this, this will have happened with Mindy, uh, co-hosted the She Rocks Awards this year in 2020. So, um, always appreciative of every little thing you do to help, um, bring diversity uh, into what's happening in the music industry and everywhere well, in the world. You, <laughs> thank you for saying that, but you know, you, you're out there in the trenches and, and you've said many times, like you can't stop. Uh, none of us can stop. It's, it, it's something that, uh, we came up the ranks in this business and, and we knew it wasn't easy. It didn't stop us. And we just thought we're going to change people's perceptions of what a woman is, what a woman should be, what we should or should not do, you know, all of that. So it, it's been fun to kind of be there on the front lines and, and watch the glass ceiling crack and, you know, shatter a little bit. And, you know, it's not, it's not gone yet, but it's definitely, there's some big cracks in it. And, and I feel like I've been a part of some of that. And so have you, yeah. <laughs> so, that's good. Yeah. We did pretty good for a girl last year yes. at She Rocks Awards. That was so fun. That was I love that. amazing. And that song has, has become a really cool thing for me to play every night. You know, it's basically my story of people coming up to me yeah. every night, you know, meaning well. Right. Wow, you're you're pretty good for a girl, you know. <laughs> but uh, Thanks, now we have, I think. <laughs> we have T-shirts and bracelets and, you know, and all have, kinds of stuff. I have the stuff. necklace. I have the yeah. pretty good for a girl. And, you know, Talisman around my neck. It's it's cool to kind of be that and, and live that. And, and I think, you know, I built a website, pretty good for a girl dot net that celebrates women and uh you know i just i want to be on the the right side of history you know yeah. and and i think it does start with us and i think it starts with us celebrating each other hiring each other um you know being friends with each other being nice to each other and um i i definitely want to start from looking in the mirror and being that person and and uh, hopefully we all will be yeah, I mean, I, I always feel like, you know, okay, we had to fight for our seat at the table, so to speak. But now that we're at the table, we got to make a space for someone else, too. Absolutely. You I know? think a lot of it is kind of mentorship and and making sure that, that women are a part of every conversation. Um, you and I were talking about in the Grammy organization. I've been a trustee for many years and, and a governor and the president of the L.A. chapter. Um, and it was so important to me and to other people in the organization that we were balanced and that we were fair and that we understood that it was more difficult for women to flourish in the music business, whether you're business, whether you're a performer, you know, it's like you've got country music radio saying the women are like the oh, yeah. tomatoes <laughs> on the salad of country music. <laughs> you know, these, that guy lost his job, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that we, we constantly have to just push forward and say, no, equality is a good thing. No one's trying to take anyone's cheese. It's let's be or lettuce you know, or, <laughs> yeah, or lettuce, whatever. <laughs> but I, I, I do think it's it's a worthy fight. And, and uh, you know, it, it's great to to mentor and be there for for other people and say, come on, let's let's 
all be this. Yeah, let's all be this. Let's all like just think about it, you know. I think sometimes it's hard because we're all so busy. We just want to take the easiest course of action. And sometimes doing that doesn't involve bringing in other women along with you. And it can be hard to find the right people. It's not always going to work, but you got to, you got to like at least have it in your brain. Let me think about that. And as a songwriter, you know, we write about what we know about and we write about what we live. Uh, You know, if you can, uh, at least me, uh, I write about, yeah, what I've experienced and what I see and what I believe and what I feel. So it's like women, women's empowerment is kind of going to come out. So, you know, the songs like pretty good for a girl or, or, uh, be beautiful that we play most every night or, uh, where there's a woman, there's a way that we did it. She rocks. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think maybe we'll add some links to this so people can check out some of those songs. I like that. I, I like, like that. that. Turn it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mindy. Is there anything else you'd like to share that we haven't touched on that you've got coming up? I know Mindy is probably like the craziest touring person I know. She's everywhere on the planet. So if you go to her website, which is MindyAbear.com. Mindy so Abair. yeah. M I N D I A B A I R dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and people should come out. Um, if they're coming to a concert, usually we do a wine and music tasting right beforehand. Oh. Uh, cause, you know, my husband's wine, I'm music. So we put the two of us together. So we have a wine and music company. So it's, oh, it's fun. Yes. So if you come, let us know and, you know, I mean, get you into the Oh, little... that's so terrible. I would hate to have to go have some wine and listen to some amazing music. You figure, like, Zach Brown has barbecues for his fans yeah. and his friends and everything before the show. So we have we have wine and music before the show. Come out and have a glass of wine with Mindy before that's right. the show. <laughs> it's your wine and music club. You have, you have something online about your wine and music um club right it's a club yeah it's a club yeah. it's uh reserve tastings.com so it's a, a club that me and my husband started he's been in the wine business forever so uh we figured we like sitting around at home drinking great wine and then i'll invariably you know pick some playlist or create some playlist to kind of go with the wine right because he's geeky about the wine but i'm geeky about the music so i'm like this is like a big cool red wine this is rock and roll you know (laughs) so now he finds the wine and i come up with the artwork for a label and then a playlist i put together like a whole playlist for it and so you're supposed to drink the wine that we send you and you're supposed to listen to the playlist, and it's ah, it's wait, more okay. of a beautiful thing. So that's reserved taste, reserve tasting, reserve tasting dot com dot com. All right, you guys got to check that out. I'm gonna go check it out because I you're I gonna need a glass of wine after I'm gonna, this. I'm this. gonna need ah! two two glasses of wine. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much, Mindy. It's Thank always you, fantastic to talk to you. Check out Mindy A Bear. Check out Mindy A Bear and the Bone Shakers. Check at reservetastings.com all amazing (laughs) things from an amazing person all right thanks laura ciao bye bye